An early morning on Coyote Lake. This is Bureau of Land Management land. Anyone can camp here without having to pay fees. It is right next to Joshua Tree and is a smart place to camp if you're looking for free places. Before hitting the mines, we ate breakfast. The first mine we navigated to was the Mission Gold Mine. Most of the hard to get to mines sit beyond Joshua Tree National Park along a mountain range. The Mission Mine is home to the deepest mine shafts this side of the Mississippi River, sitting at 650 feet deep. I'll bet they kept all their explosives in here. Yeah, because it's like a literal storage place, buried in rock and everything else. So if it blew up, it'd be fine. So not sure if I'm right, but this is probably where they stored all the dynamite. It looks like a bunker where they would store like stuff like that for the mine. Mines over there that way. And it went boom over here and probably keep everybody safe. And uh, literally got little shelters there, as you saw, for whatever was stored in there. So. It is estimated the mine has over 280,000 ounces of gold in reserve. The road there requires a 4x4 with a higher clearance. The main shaft is covered over for everyone's protection. There is another shaft, but you'll have to hike to get there. This shaft has been explored by other YouTube enthusiasts in other videos. I myself was not going down this day due to the time constraints. So that mine, that was just a straight shot down with those three ladders and made it all the way down to the bottom. That wood is just so old. I'm so big, being six foot eight. I'm not gonna take my chances going down. I have rope and everything, could have made a pulley system, but it's just not worth it. Old places like that, it's better just to observe from a distance than actually get inside of it. The main purpose of this trip was to find the mines and know the exact route to get there. After the mine shaft, we explored the main equipment that was used in the mining process. By 1930, the mine reached a depth of 570 feet. In 1949, a two compartment shaft was dug to 600 feet and operated by a six horsepower gas engine. In 1981, the last mining operations pushed the shaft to the final 650 feet. Everything is very rusted out and unsafe. So if you decide to go, go at your own risk. Once we were done exploring Mission Gold Mine, we loaded up and headed back to Old Dale Road. This was the main dirt road, and then we found the next route to the Brooklyn Mine. Make sure to bring extra gallons of water if you go in the hotter seasons, and be sure you are well experienced in the off-road driving department. The Brooklyn Mine is tucked away on a jeep trail that has you off-roading past many other mines on either side. A spare tire is always a must because of all the mining debris. The wash looks easy and smooth from above, but on the ground, I'll assure you it's not. We use the drone to scout ahead and find the most direct route to the mine. 
We stopped a few times because the row was so bad, we had to move a few rocks. On the way up, we passed by a group of Jeeps, and they all gave the same advice. Four-wheel drive, low gear, and crawl. When you get to the cabin we arrived at, you will know you've right, made so it. We made it to the Brooklyn Mine. It's a little bit windy out here, so it's hard to see. This is the little cabin before you get to the mine. Everybody's got some nice stuff in there. They outfit it with a shade, they got a light. So people have got uh, water, we've got snacks. There's a log book, MREs. Over here they lay bottles of water. And they keep it pretty nice. A little fire thing here and chairs. So, uh, really nice. As we were coming up, the Jeeps coming down said we were taking the hardest route up. We're not very thrilled about it. Uh, we're kind of happy that we are here at the mine finally. So, we'll get out and try to hit some air conditioning. So. Yeah. Beyond the cabin lies the mine. It is up the hill and tucked away on the right-hand side. The way up takes you past remnants of mining equipment, ruins, and large wooden circles with pink mud inside them. The pink mud hills are said to contain traces of cyanide, so try not to disturb the foundation or breathe in the dust too much if you hike on it. The Brooklyn Mine is a former gold mine established in the 19th century. In 1899, it was sold to the Brooklyn Mining Company, which is where the name comes from. It was operated on a limited basis until the 1940s, when it was permanently closed. Water on it? Probably find out real quick. That way? There are places you can go up or down but do so at your own risk. The wood is over 100 years old and we're meant for people much smaller than we are today. Oh, an ore shirt. That's a cool. That's Wow, and it goes up. There is a 550 foot adit on the Brooklyn Mine, plus a 200 foot winds with levels at 60, 110, 160, and 200 feet that developed two ore chutes. The mine put out so much material, a mill was erected on the property. You get a drill in here and drill it. Oh, that is so cool. Going through the mine, you think to yourself about all that went on inside and everyone who walked the same path you were walking. No, this is a tunnel. Let's light everything is up. Turn the level way up there. A lot of the really important gases. 
I think it was like, there's four of them that can have good minds and two of them it's missing. Uh -huh. It's like hurting my nose. It's like a wait, wait, wait. Ten cans. Yeah, let's get out of here. Come on. What is it? I just don't like the way it smells. I don't know if it's because I'm bent over or what. No, it's hurting my nose. Are you getting my nose? Yeah. My lungs just feel a little bit weird. I beat down. I don't know if it's because I'm squatted down or what. But I don't think that. Oh, it's not there. Mine for a second, which yeah, we'll go down a different chute. Okay. Well, let's get out of here for a second and drink water. Ooh. You, you smell that fresh air? So we turned around, we smelled something bad in the cave. This something to be a little fearful. We have a gas meter, but it doesn't pick up on all the bad gases. All the bad gases, so we didn't want to risk that. We're gonna go back in and explore a different tunnel, see if it smells the same way. Uh, and then we'll head out, but we don't want to linger too long in there, especially when it's like that. Come on. Really collapsed. It's like they filled it in. I bet they uh, sealed it up for whatever. Oh, we're only here once. Come this way. <laughs> so we made it in about 100 meters or so, and we just hit that smell again. It smells like a bad gas or a dead body or something, something dead. It's so really we, bad. we really don't want to go any further um, in the general direction we went earlier. It must have been the pocket they were following. Old rails still line the floor of this mine in some areas. Honey, this part is not in the bank either. Yeah, it's, it's like a bed or a pocket where they put stuff in. Yeah. You're tiny. Oh, significant change. Oh, Immediately significant change. It was quite the journey to get to this area. The vastness of the forgotten mining district is incredible. Be sure when you come out here to bring plenty of water and some extra gas in case of an emergency. This is what we got from the mine. food. Miner's food cache right here. All their meals were eaten out. There's Tosh Myrtle. Had a beautiful view looking out that way. Decided to eat all their food. 
top of that nice big hill. On the back side of the cabin, you will see the road going up the mountain. This was one of the worst parts we went up. Off-road tires are needed for this because it is dry ground and the gravel will keep moving under the tires with street tread. I had to keep the vehicle moving for the momentum to keep up with the tire grab. In some cases, one wrong move going fast and I would have been a part of the landscape. Overall, it was a good experience and a beautiful place to visit.